Good morning, YouTubers, and welcome back to King Tower Farm. Today, we are harvesting some bok choy. We have an order for them, and it's quite a lot of bok choy. As you can see, our leaves are nice and healthy. Look at this guy. Nice white pumpkin. This is Zayote right here and it's so tiny but in 15 days we should see something. We've been adding these trellises already because we noticed we have been growing a lot of crawling things. Um, these are our Kong Kong. This looks like uh, chili. These are all chili, so it's Kong Kong. So we're now doing alternating planting systems. Some lettuce over here. And then these are our tomato plants over here. This is our basil. I do want the basil to keep giving me leaves, so I will take out the buds. This needs to be trimmed. So much flowers and buds that I'm removing already so that we can make sure that they keep on leafing instead. Doing some updates, this is a biochar reactor that we're making. We're basically making a chimney so that we can burn these things and make it into charcoal. Today we're going to be doing some farm updates and showing you guys the things that have changed since last year. I haven't been doing much farm updates because the the terrain and the mud and the rains have been crazy. As you can see here, it's super muddy slushy. Today we're going to be going over our biochar project, our worm vermicompost expansion area, and finally our aquaponic pond as well because we have been, I guess, on hold with the aquaponic pond in a way. So now we're going to be reviewing it again and seeing what we need to change. We've learned quite a few things over the holidays on what to do with the aquaponic pond so we're definitely gonna implement that and uh, I think we're gonna be able to make the pond sooner because we found out that we actually don't need to construct a big roof. Our consultant just arrived so we're gonna be meeting him in a bit and showing you guys what are the things that we're gonna be doing. So come along. But may you only put that in Kaya Nat Malaman. Sang na lady mobi. So if we're following the one from uh Bob, yeah. then you had upper vents, okay, and then had lower vents also. How about this one? Only the bottom. Yeah. Only underneath. So what's gonna happen is the community of Kakoi. But I'm gonna follow the our farm area. We're kind of we're beside it. This was the first version. Obviously, we made a mistake because there's too much ventilation and our charcoal completely burned out. We have a few useful pieces that we're going to be using for our vermi tea, but the rest of it is ash and we're just going to sprinkle it all over some of the beds. A different variety of Mayana. You can look at it later. It's more green than purple and, the, and the, it's more, what's it? What, what's lighter, violet or purple? Leah, leave it. Fend for yourselves. The two crazies are here. Just showing you guys what is happening with our calamansi field along with our pineapple field. Uh, calamansis are doing well, the pineapples are getting too big, so we're going to be removing them in the next few days so that we can actually put some uh, cover crops. This is a cover crop row in the middle. What are we going to replace the pineapples with? Oh, no, uh, anything actually. Well, actually, we don't have to replace them. But in the meantime, I was thinking of putting mongo. So we're, we're just going to yank that out and put the nitrogen fixing crop, yep. which is mongo legumes. Legumes will go here to help uh, support the calamansi. We have, so normally with these things, we take out the fruit and we take out the flower first so that the trees can get bigger. So even though it looks like a waste of removing it, it's for the better for the plants so that they grow bigger. And if they grow bigger, we're able to get more volume from them. Look at this cute pineapple.
So this is the top of the aquaponic pond where we're supposed to have a little waterfalls feature and help with oxygenating the pond. We wanted to cascade the ponds together, but learning what we've learned now, we're actually going to separate the pond two from pond one to make sure that the fish don't jump across because we're going to be growing different species here, different species here, and then everything will be connected up on the hill. We're clearing now because we're going to make grow beds on both sides of the hill, which is this is what it looks here. Grow bed here and a grow bed there. So our next steps um, after clearing is the, the piping first. Uh, it, it might be both. Uh, I'm going to talk to Oliver um, once I get out of here. Better signal. Uh, I'll, I'll ask him to come over because he has to understand uh, the piping yeah. and where the pipes will pass. Piping, drainage, balancer tube, yeah. um, obviously the piping towards the filtration medium. Yeah, and I have to give him a, a heads up because I think he has to pull his people from out of town because they have other projects too. And then we're going to do the levels so that we can do the steps for yeah. the grow areas. Yeah, so Bong is going to bring his team on Monday or Tuesday next week to really uh, instruct the proper leveling already. Uh -huh. He was supposed to bring us today, but they had they had another project. That they had to do. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, we're ready. How uh, long has this project been going on? <laughs> before the pandemic, right? I think even <laughs> before the pandemic, I've been working on this for like a few months and then... It... Yeah. Oh, that's right, yeah. This is like a two year almost. Well, 2019 or something. Yeah, it's been a while. But, Work uh, is going to be done again soon and hopefully this year we can see some fishies in there. Oh, you're videoing. Well, yeah. uh, you asked me it's perfect timing because rainy season is supposed to end. So it's perfect time for them to do everything. Start building everything. So by the time it rains, we're going to get filled. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what's next for our farm agenda? Next, uh, well, I think we can start talking to the team about the biochar. We, we can pour some biochar later. Okay. So we can yeah. take it on video. Yeah. So in our previous video, you've seen that we were using the bathtubs to put the vermicompost, but today we are actually making an expansion chamber for all the vermicompost. This whole area over here is going to be dedicated yep. to making the vermicast. So Butch was saying this will be about 20 beds <coughs> and then we'll have, I guess, another 10 beds here on the side. Butch is now transplanting. Oh, you're going to see if uh, cuttings work. Because these work. Basil works. These are from the tower? Uh-huh. Awesome. Uh, this is, fr I brought this. These are, these are Cuban oregano. They're easy. See your mongos there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put that on the other side. This is our first version of the grow beds where we we're trying to do the raised beds. This is adobati. But remember the plant I wanted with a snowy leaf? Remember I showed you guys a photo? Oh, sure, yeah. It's here, it's growing. The... It looks like it's a snow plant. It's lemon balm. Yeah, where, is, where is our lemon balm? I think it's this one. This is lemon balm. So it's a relative of the mint. Mm -hmm. And then when you rub it. Nice. Oh, it's so beautiful. Actually, might make a good tea. Uh, yeah, it's not uh, coconut tree like I chose last week. But I suggest you choose your own tree. Chili Which one peppers. you wanna? Yeah, let's let's pick a tree so that I know. Yeah. Oh, these chili peppers are looking good. I'll, I'll go there, so I'll check if they're complete. We are gonna move to the fruit orchard where we are using the biochar and the vermicast and we're inoculating it and we're applying it to the ground. They've done it a few times. We're going to see something that they've already done and then we're going to do one also so you guys can see how we were taught how to do it. So the plan is for that thing when it starts getting thicker, 
the spread. So we'd rather have the cover crop spread than the grass? A lot, uh, definitely. Here, I'll show you how it's supposed to look eventually. So Butch asked me to select a tree and this is what I've chosen. This is our orange tree. Last year when we moved to the farm, I actually attacked this tree quite, a, quite often where it had given us some really, really good crops. Obviously, it needs help, it needs some cleaning. We're actually going to inoculate the soil with some biochar. Hopefully it's going to work and give us more amazing oranges. So first off, the staff will clear and prepare the soil. What we're trying to do is access the crown. If you guys don't know what the crown is, the crown is basically how big the tree is. That's where the, usually the roots expand to. So the tree being this big, our crown is about yay big. So we're actually going to just take the hoe and the knife and clear the grounds and prepare everything. In the wheelbarrow over here on the left is actually the inoculated biochar already. If you guys don't know what it is, you can watch my other video, which is about vermicomposting. It's basically the vermicast with charcoal. This is full of beneficial bacteria. Now we're going to, again, um, pour it on the soil and then after that, top it off with some cover crops. And we're gonna we're gonna spread it around. So dumping some vermicast. Also give our cover crops some growing medium to uh, take up some nutrients. How old are these cover crops that we're transplanting? Oh, I, they're from all over. Uh, I mean, we just get them from the ground. We stick them in, a, in their own pots. That's maybe a few weeks old. These are a few weeks old already? The, yeah, the cover crops. We, no, because we, we literally get cuttings or root, uproot some just to propagate more. So yeah. we've, we've been getting them from all over the property. Your, your dad planted a bunch before, but never focused on, I mean, we never focused on trying to make them. The really, use, the use of it. Yeah. Your dad's old consultant? Uh, Greg Kitma. Yeah. He, he was all for cover cropping and green manuring. He was uh, biodynamic farming. Right. But he, he just left it as is. Um, because we, we need a more aggressive approach with the property again because of the acidity it's full of carabao grass carabao grass is pretty aggressive so you need to help it along by making the roots firm and really strong and then you know keep on planting more until eventually you overrun the carabao grass and everything else so you're saying we'd rather have money money than carabao grass yeah any kind of cover crop uh, uh, a legumous cover crop then Carbo grass because carbo grass, the roots of these guys are very shallow. So, actually, according to uh, Gabe Brown, yes, two thirds of organic material in the soil is from roots. So, if you don't make enough roots and the roots don't bury deep enough, you've just got a go, top layer. The top, the top soil doesn't get deeper. Okay, yeah. I get that. Right. So. Eventually, you know, over time, the plant dies, you have more plants, and eventually those roots just become... Become carbon. Yeah. Plus, that's where your mycorrhiza grows, right? In the roots. Yeah. And around the roots. And everything eventually gets connected. That's the reason why you don't want to till. Because you till, you destroy all the mycorrhiza. Is that's there a rule of thumb on how much many, many crops we are using? Or are we just uh, randomly... Well, from Gabe Brown's suggestion, the more varieties, the better. That's why we bought the three different kinds of seeds. But this looks like, how many varieties is this? It no, this is the one. same. Yeah. That's just one kind. The other cover crops in other area. So we planted seeds. And the ones that I keep on pointing at, right? The ones in the rows and we tried. This is how it looks right now. And we'll check on this again in two weeks and show you guys the progress. Whew. Today is a hot day. So we just finished showing you guys what we're using the vermity and the biochar for. And then again, in the next few weeks, we'll come back and check it out again. Right now, we're going to go back in and fix the design of our biochar reactor. 
or charcoal reactor. Look at those guys. There's a huge guy right here. Look at this guy. Nice and healthy. There's another one here. Another one there. Look how cute these guys are. Beautiful flowers. Everything looking so good. We did make an adjustment to the Dositron again, which allowed us to sort of fix what's been happening. We're having issues like this where it's sort of like dehydration where the leaves fold over. Here, you have some of it still happening. So we've actually had to redo the concentration for the nutrient solution. So this is our first time to grow sayote. And so far looking so good. There's actually some more little sprouts like here. And then a few more there. <laughs> a few people were asking how the horses were. Here they are, looking for treats. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Terry. He likes carrots better. Here, yeah, Ruby. That's my finger, Ruby. Get some treats for the horses. Where's Luna? There. We'll walk to Luna. Careful because then Jerry will start to kick. So the horses are actually doing well. Um, we're waiting for the equine vet to come and check on the horses because uh, Jerry has this rash on his face. But you should see their new stables. It's much bigger and we've separated. Whoop, watch out. We've separated um, both Jerry and Ruby. And Jerry and Luna share the same stable, but Ruby has to be separate because she does get bullied. You dropped them. That's it, kids. You're so muddy. Yeah, so muddy. I roll. I, I roll rolls with it. <laughs> You're rolling in the deep. Mm. Leia's actually scared of the horses now. So she's pretty behaved. Doesn't even harass them or run after any of the horses. Wanted to show you guys a quick update of the stables. This is the pathway that we've made and we're still sorting it out. As you guys know from my previous video, this was their stable before, but we've now built an expansion. That's the storage area and this is their new stable. Ruby has her own stable right here and Jerry and Luna still share a stable right there. Um, as you can see, we've actually increased the height. We've made it a little bigger. We've put some border, higher border so that we can put a thicker topping so that they don't hurt their shoes or their nails or their feet. And then we've actually added a little rainwater collection system. And then there's a solar light as well here. This is where we keep all their food and other dry goods so that the rats don't get them. Much bigger area inside. The roof is much higher. And we got their feeding tray here. This one's an auto feeder. 
This one feeds off the rainwater that we collect. And Ruby's is just manual. 